GIMP has a variety of transform tools that come with it, um, and they're about halfway down the tools pane. They're the little blue icons with arrows going various directions, um, and I'm just going to kind of go over them, what they can do, what are a couple of the drawbacks, and how you can use them correctly. So I've got this square that I'm going to manipulate uh, to demonstrate the power and the functions of the various transform tools. So first off is the rotation tool. That's Shift-R. And that rotates your selection, or your selected layer, or your path. It can even do path, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to press Shift-R right now. And then from there, you've got this little angle slider. And you can change the center, too. So um, it changes from what, uh, from where the anchor is from the rotation. So if I move my center like way down, then uh, it changes how, the, how it rotates. But I'm going to put my, zen, my center to 500, and then 500 here, and that should center it. Yeah, okay. So I can just click and drag anywhere uh, on the image, on the canvas here, and rotate uh, how I want it. And then I just press the rotate button. It does the final rotation, and I get that rendered out. That's the rotation tool. Very useful. Got to remember, Shift R. Just boom, click, drag, done. The next one is a scale tool. Uh, same deal, affects paths and selections and layers uh, and then you just click on your layer and you scale it down or you can scale it up and if you want to scale it uh, or constrain it proportionally proportionally excuse me uh, you can just hold control and it'll scale proportionally uh, which is great for most applications I would say you're usually gonna want to uh, scale your scale anything proportionally unless you're doing it to intentionally distort an image so scale it that way. Now I know it about down and down sampling and up sampling. Um, if you have to try to up sample something with GIMP, uh, it's going to try to maintain the image as best as it can, but the algorithm isn't perfect. It's not uh, too much worse than Photoshop's actually. Um, although Photoshop definitely develops theirs much more. Uh, you're going to get, after a while, you're going to get images that look uh, distorted and if you're upscaling at all from like a like a detailed photograph it's going to distort at about I mean noticeably at 101 percent but um, any I mean at 200 percent 300 percent you're going to see a lot of artifacting so don't upscale photographs and stuff like that now the next one is the shear tool on the shear tool uh, is sort of like a skew tool uh, you can just click on an image and then drag up and down left and right and you'll shear it here. We'll, we'll make a new square so I can demonstrate this better. Boom, shear like that. And then, so I just gonna drag across the top here and it uh, just shears it or skews it to the right. And I've got this little uh, like uh, polygon shape. So that's what that tool does. Not that useful, but it's there. The next one is the perspective tool. The or perspective tool is actually rather useful, especially for creating backgrounds or interesting objects. So there's our uh, shape. Click, clicked on it with a perspective tool, which is a Shift P, and then I'm just going to hold Control. Oop, that doesn't do anything. Okay, uh, I'm just dragging these corners out here until I have like a kind of a straight line along the bottom. Transform, and it, it has perspectivized it. Uh, so you can make all kinds of effects with that. And then you can throw a gradient uh, on top of that. Say I wanted to select this. Uh, oops. I'll just alt-click on the uh, window or the little thumbnail in my layers panel on that layer. And it's selected uh, everything but the alpha in that layer. And then I'm just going to create a gradient. So you, get, you can do all kinds of 3D stuff. And if I wanted this video to be ultra long, I would build a castle out of planes, but uh, I won't do that right now. So the final tool is the mirror or flip tool, and you just go on the left here, you can flip it horizontally or vertically, and that's really self-explanatory, just flips it or mirrors it. And those um, are the tools. The final one, which is a new addition, is the cage transform tool. Let's make a new square here. The cage transform here or tool is a little bit finicky. Uh, but it's, it can be fun, and you can get some interesting results depending on what your source material is. So I've got the cage transform tool open here, and I'm just going to uh, transform 
uh, I'm just going to place dots around the, the corner here. And then I can move these dots and it, it manipulates uh, the layer I have right there as it is. And um, yeah, it's not perfect. I think they're still working on it quite a bit. So definitely some things to go. But this is kind of comparable to Photoshop's distortion tool. A little bit different, but mostly comparable. Uh, and then I'll just press enter and we have <laughs> this shape. Yes, I've always wanted to make that shape. Anyhow, those are the transform tools. This is learngib.org.